Hello, I'm Dr. Annadale, and I teach philosophy at Mount St. Mary's University and Seminary in Emmitsburg, Maryland. I want to talk today about the issue of student choice in higher education. This is a topic that has come up a lot lately, students wanting more control over the courses they take, over their education, students questioning the value of extensive core requirements at many different institutions. And I, what I want to do today is to suggest three different models for thinking through this issue. The first model is the model of a buffet, a buffet restaurant, where you go and you pay your money at the front desk, then you take a plate and you help yourself to whatever you please. If you choose to fill up on french fries, that's entirely uh, your choice. If you're not satisfied with the experience you've had at a buffet, that's owing almost, that owes almost entirely to your choices that you have made. There's nobody standing beside each bar at the buffet to give you advice about what to choose and what not to choose. Nobody forcing you to pick things from different food groups. You are in a situation of total freedom. And we can think about education that way. We can give students that level of freedom, simply taking their money at the door and letting them uh, assemble whatever it is that they, that they wish. The second model I want to suggest would be the model of a French restaurant, where I might go and be seated and order some wine, then the waiter might come and say, Monsieur, do you want to try the snails today? And I might say, I don't know, I'm not that partial to invertebrates. And the waiter could uh, say to me, well, the snails are quite excellent today, sir. I've had them myself. I think they'll go quite well with the wine you have. And if you enjoy lobster, I think you'll really enjoy these snails. Now, at that point, I can make up my mind based upon the advice the waiter has given me. And I might say, no, not snails today. Bring me the linguine instead. Uh, in that situation, I've had the chance to profit from an offer of the expertise of the waiter who knows the menu and perhaps knows a little bit about my preferences. Um, and he's able to make some suggestions and give me some advice on how to choose but the ultimate choice still remains mine. That's a second model we can use to think about higher education and student choice, the French waiter model. The third model I'll suggest is the model of a sensei, or a master teacher, in a martial arts dojo. If I want to go into a martial arts academy, um, I cannot go up to the teacher and say on my first day, look, I want to learn how to kick a guy in the face while balancing on one foot. Just teach me that. Any uh, sensei worth his salt is going to say no. If you are going to start here, you're going to begin at the beginning. You're going to begin by taking falls, learning how to block and how to strike, uh, beginning at the lowest levels of the belts, and then working your way up according to a program that I set out. You're going to submit yourself then to the moral authority of the martial arts master if you wish to learn martial arts at all. There is no uh, short-circuiting this process, only to pick and choose the bits that you want. So that's a third model of higher education choice. We might think of the education as following some kind of rigorous authoritative model which uh, cannot be changed. The authority of the martial arts master is unquestioned in his own academy. Uh, the student can only trust that by the time he gets up to being able to do the more advanced moves that he really is interested in, he will be able to see the value of the preliminary work that he was forced to do, perhaps while grumbling. So those are the three models I want to suggest for talking about and thinking through this issue of student choice in higher education, the buffet, the French restaurant, and the martial arts academy. I hope your discussions on this topic are rewarding. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.